on this episode of Marshall and Amy. How was it, Mal? Our first taste of frites. They're good. He sometimes wears different clothes or different like hats and things like that. Mm. Good first waffle experience. I'm happy. Okay, right there. That's mannequin piss. Oh. So it's famous for holding the Guinness Book of World Records award for most beers in a single bar. I have to say, Belgium is growing on me a little bit. Today, we're gonna do a little DIY food tour here in Brussels. We're very excited. We're going waffles, fries, chocolate, beer, and maybe a couple other things thrown in there. Are you ready? Yes. Let's roll. Sorry, it might be loud because of that thing. <laughs> Okay, we're back in the Grand Place. It's the big kind of square in the middle of Brussels. And uh, we're here during the day. We saw it last night at night. And it is way better at night, but it's still very beautiful. Gold, ornate buildings everywhere. And it's really cool. It's really touristy though. So I kind of want to get away from the square today a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with Marsh. Get away from the square. We'll find some food. <laughs> So here's the new, here's the plan. We're just out walking, checked in on a couple stores, but Amy came up with a great plan. We are going to walk towards Delirium Village, Delirium Tremens, which is the, the famous bar here in Brussels that has over 2,000 beers. I think they have 2,004 different types of beer that you can get. We want to go there, so we're just going to walk in that direction. If we see a waffle stand along the way, we'll stop and get a waffle. If not, we'll just get a beer first. Yep, sounds like a plan. What do we got, Ann? So we have a waffle. There are two different types of waffles you can get in Belgium. A liege waffle and just like a fluffier like Brussels waffle is what they call it. So what the is this? The liege waffle, I think this is a liege waffle. They're like coated in um, like syrup and sugar and they're like crispy versus the Brussels waffles are like soft and fluffy like what you might think of when you think of a Belgian waffle. Mm. But if you come to Belgium, you can't just say like, I want a Belgium waffle because that doesn't really make sense here. So, but yeah, I think this is a liege waffle. We got Nutella and banana on it. Give it a go, it's gonna be hard to eat. And now these little things are not, not efficient. really the best for eating this. I'm about to just pick it up and eat it like that. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> good? Very good. The waffle itself is just really good. It's like, it's got a lot of flavor. It's like the dough is like a little bit like salty and stretchy with like the warm Nutella. Mm. Let me get up in there. Give me a taste, All my right, love. Let me get a bite here. It's good. The crust on the outside, honestly, is like a little sweet for me. Really? I Marshall's think some, such a sweet person too. I think something tart on top. I saw one that was like kiwi mm. on top. I think that would have been really good. Some like tart to cut through the sweet because the Nutella and the banana and then the shell on the outside, it's like a like a sugar bomb. I'm gonna be like shaking. <laughs> Yum. Very good. Good first waffle experience, I'm happy. All right, so we found literally waffle place was right there, uh, right here, there's a free shop. It says it's 250 euro, so we're gonna give it a try. There's a line out the door, so it's always a good sign, so didn't have to walk far for frites. Let's try it. Ben beer. Ben beer. How was it, Mal? Our first taste of frites. They're good. Here in Belgium, what sauce did you get? Tartar. I got samurai sauce, which is a little bit spicy and like mayonnaise-y. The fries are like thicker cut, which in terms of the fry world, I don't think they're the best. Um, but the sauce with it, it's very good. Very hit in the spot.
far so cool. Okay, so what's the story on this place, Anne? What is it, what's it famous for? So it's famous for holding the Guinness Book of World Records award for most beers in a single bar. And how many was it? 2004. 2004 beers in the year 2004 is when they got the Guinness record. 2004 beers, for that perspective, you could try a new beer every day, and in six years, you still wouldn't try all of them. Oh my gosh. That math might be a little off, but right around six years, it would take you to try all 2004 beers. Okay, so we just pulled up a chair at one of these big barrels, a little stool, we're gonna try some Belgian beer. Okay, Marsh, what did you get? So I got some kind of like citrusy, like hoppy, like kind of like a pale ale, what we would call it back home. Um, got a little guy, don't want to get too drunk earlier in the day. Um, had a few sips, it's really good. Um, what do you say about it? When you first like take a drink, it almost, it, you get like orange peel almost on the nose and then like, and then you get like that weedy like smoothness and then like once it finishes you get that little bit of bitter like hoppiness. It's like there's like three stages of tasting and it's really good. It's, I quite like it a lot. I would drink a couple of them. So if you've see, ever seen like a Stella Artois commercial or anything like that, they pour the beer off the tap and then they take like a like a, a, a tool that's like flat on one side and they scrape the head off. And I got to see them do that to mine. That was pretty cool. I've never, I didn't think they like actually would do that. Amy's. It's like pink. And it's cherry flavored or creek. I think it's like a, a Flemish word for cherry. It's a lambic beer, so it um, instead of like traditional fermentation that's like very rigorously, you know, measured and checked, lambic beers do what's called wild fermenting. So they just like naturally ferment on their own. And um, they're oftentimes like sour or like fruity beers. Um, the wild fermentation, and it's so good. I love sour beers. Honestly, it's a li it, it tastes just a tiny bit like cherry cough syrup. It's, it's pretty sweet, um, but it's got that sour edge that like cuts through it a little bit um, fizzy, but not like a traditional beer. I'm guessing that's from like the wild fermentation. Really good. <laughs> After enjoying some beers amongst Brussels brewing history in the world-famous Delirium Tremens Bar, it was time to make our way to possibly the world's most famous peeing statue. Going to find, there's a famous little fountain here called Mannequin Piss, and it looks like a little kid peeing. <laughs> Why it's famous, I have no idea, but <laughs> we're gonna go check it out. We are on the hunt for it. We're gonna try to only use street signs to find it. No Google Maps here. He's very small, so I have a feeling we may have passed him a couple times already. He's that but small? He's pretty small. So let's go try to find him. Okay, I'm seeing some tourist stuff pop up, so I think we're getting hot. There he is, Mel. <laughs> we found him. Mannequin piece. Okay, right there, that's mannequin piss. Two unique facts about mannequin piss. I think it's piss, maybe it's piece, mannequin piece. But he's been stolen a couple of times. So this mannequin piece that's behind us is from 1965. Also, depending on the time of year and holiday, he sometimes wears different clothes or different like hats and things like that. So obviously right now, not a holiday, but maybe if we were here on Easter, he'd be wearing like bunny ears or something. So, cool facts. Pretty cool. Alright, so I'm gonna try a beer called the Cuvée de Troll. And what are you gonna try? It's called Bink Blonde. I'm gonna order French. Bonjour. 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 Perfect. S'il vous plaît. Marshall mentioned earlier that um, all the beers here they put in the glasses that belong with 
that beer, that brewery, and it stands true. Like both of these glasses are the exact glasses for our exact type of beer, not even just like the brewery. So I got the pink blonde. And Marsh got the <laughs> Marsh got the cuvée de troll. And that's like a little troll glass. Alright, so we were drinking those beers and tasting them. Honestly, just Belgian beer is just so high in alcohol. It's just so heavy. It just started making us both feel kind of terrible. So we decided to call it a day. Amy's really not feeling good. Her stomach's kind of bothering her. So we're just going to head back to the apartment and call it a night. Sorry for this this episode ending super abruptly, but... I don't know what it is. It's really not the beer. It's like all of a sudden my body is just like... I just feel horrible, like very nauseous. And like, I really... I mean, I haven't had too much to drink or anything like that. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know where to... I feel really terrible, like, I've got to go lay down. Sorry guys, <laughs> what a bad end to this DIY food tour, but... Yeah, so we're ending it there. We tried everything, but we're just like, oh, got it. We just got to go home. So, adios for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Next time on Marshall and Amy. And today we are heading to the ancient city of Bruges. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I would totally recommend it. Very quaint, very romantic. <laughs> it's hailing or snowballing or something. Hey guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.